require any other party to give a bill of particulars of such party's claim or a copy of the items of the account alleged in a pleading. As used elsewhere in this article, the term bill of particulars shall include a copy of items on the account. A bill, a dem, a. Demands for a bill of particulars shall be made by serving on the other party a statement, a demand, concerning which particulars are desired. Within 30 days of the demand, of service of the demand, the other party shall serve on the person requesting, demanding the bill of particulars, a bill of particulars <laughs> complying with each item of the demand, except any item to which the party objects, in which event the reasons for the objection shall be stated with reasonable particularity. The assertion of an objection shall not relieve the party on whom the demand is made from the obligation to respond in full within 30 days of service of the demand to the items of the demand to which no objection has been made. In any action or proceeding in a court of which a note of issue is required to be filed, a party may amend the bill to kit particulars once as of course prior to the filing of a note of issue. Oh, filing of the note of issue. So you can amend your bill, bill of particulars once prior to the filing of the note of issue. The court may make such final or conditional order with regard to the failure or refusal, including <coughs> relief as is set forth in 3126, 3126, 3126, 3126, penalties for refusal to comply with order or, or to disclose. One, in order that the issues to which the information is relevant shall be deemed resolved for purposes of the action and according with the claims of the party obtaining the order. An order prohibiting the disobedient party from supporting or opposing designated claims or defenses, from producing evidence, designated things or items of testimony, from introducing any evidence of physical, mental, or blood condition sought to be determined, or from using certain witnesses, an order striking out pleadings or parts thereof, or staying further proceedings until the order is obeyed, or dismissing the action or any part thereof, or rendering a judgment by default against the disobedient party. Of interrogatories. In the case of an action to recover damages for personal injury, injury to property, or wrongful death predicated solely on a cause or cause of action for negligence, a party shall not be permitted to serve interrogatories on and conduct a deposition of the same party pursuant to Rule 3107 without leave of on motion in a matrimonial action or proceeding brought by either party upon such notice to the other party and to the non-party from whom financial disclosure is sought and given in such manner as the court shall direct, the court may order a non-party to respond under oath to written interrogatories limited to furnishing financial information concerning a party and further provided such information is reasonable and necessary in the prosecution or defense of the matrimonial action or proceeding. A party may amend or supplement his pleading upon leave of court or upon stipulation of all parties at any time. If the complaint is not served with the summons, the defendant may, within the time to answer, serve a demand for the complaint. Service of the complaint shall be made within 20 days of the demand. An answer to a cross-claim only if the cross-claim contains a demand for an answer. 
if no demand is made, the cross claim shall be deemed denied or avoided. There shall be no other pleading unless the court orders otherwise. Action for medical, dental, or podiatric malpractice a certificate executed by the attorney for the plaintiff is concluded upon such review that there is reasonable basis for the um, commencement of the action. Okay, if, if there was the statute of limitations was going to expire, they just got to get that certificate in within 90 days. 90 days shall be filed. Certificate shall be filed within 90 days after service of the complaint. If the attorney was unable to obtain the cons consultation because he made three good faith attempts and all of them refused, and none of those contacted would agree to such a consultation... Um, oh, here's something interesting. Where a certificate is required, a single certificate shall be filed for each ac action, even if one or more defendants been named in the complaint or is subsequently named. So even if you're suing, like, you know, 10 people, it's only one certificate per action. Separate causes of action or defenses shall be separately stated and numbered and may be stated regardless of consistency. Causes of action or defenses may be stated alternatively or hypothetically. A copy of any writing which is attached to a pleading is a part thereof for all purposes. Stuff of or occurrence of a condition precedent in a contract need not be pleaded. A denial of performance shall be made specifically and with particularity. In the case of such denial, the party relying upon the performance shall be required to prove on the trial only such performance or occurrence as shall have been so specified. B. Corporate status, where any party is a corporate corporation, the complaint shall so state, and where known, it shall specify the country or government by uh, or under whose laws the party was created. <laughs> C, a judgment, decision, or other determination of a court, judicial <laughs> or quasi Judicial tribunal or of other board or officer may be pleaded without stating matter showing the jurisdiction to render it. D. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, each signature on a negotiable instrument shall be deemed admitted. <laughs> of doing business. If it's in New York, Suffolk, Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, or Nassau, the complaint shall allege, as part of the cause of action, that the plaintiff is duly licensed and shall contain the name and number of any such license and the governmental agency which issued such license. The failure of the plaintiff to comply with this subdivision shall provide the defendant cause and permit the defendant to move for dismissal pursuant to paragraph 7 of section or a defense is based upon representation, misrepresentation, fraud or mistake, or willful default, breach of trust or undue influence, the circumstances constituting the wrong shall be stated in detail. In an action for separation of divorce, the nature of circumstances of a party's alleged misconduct of any and any such shall the state the time and place of each act complained of if any In an action on a judgment, the complaint shall state that anything recovered 
against the defendant or against the person jointly liable. Okay, the petition for allowance for infant support. Petition to Supreme County or Surrogate's Court. Contents. The petition for application of an infant's property for the infant support, maintenance, or education shall set forth in detail the amount and nature of the property, where it is, how invested his income from the property, or any other source in any claim against the infant. Two, whether or not the parents are living, when if either is living, all circumstances relative their, to their ability to support, if they're both dead, the names of the other person is legally obligated to support the infant, circumstances of their ability to support the infant, terms of any previous made order made by the court within or without the state for similar relief and what happened, the disposition of it, notice. Notice such notice as the court shall direct shall be given to, one, guardian of the property, if petition is re re uh, presented by other than the guardian of the property, two, the infant's father of living, if not, to the infant's mother, or if neither parent is alive, then to the person where with whom the infant resides, and the infant himself, if he's 14 or more. So that's one, two, three, but there's a whole lot of, you know, like, weird things going on there. I said money is subject to withdrawal only upon the order of the court. But then a claim brought upon behalf of an infant pursuant to the insurance law may be submitted to arbitration without a court order. Settlement procedure. Affidavit shall state, and included in the supporting papers, shall see one, the name, residence, and relationship to the infant or, or incompetent. Two, the name, age, and residence of the infant, infant or incompetent. Three, circumstances giving rise to the claim. Four, the nature and extent of the damages sustained by the infant. The name of each physician who treated the infant or who was consulted. The medical expenses, period of disability, the amount of wages lost, and the present physical condition of the infant. Five, the terms of the, of the proposed distribution of the settlement and his approval of both. Six, facts surrounding any other motion or petition for settlement of the same claim of an action to recover for the same claim. Seven, whether reimbursement has been received from any source. Eight, whether the representative or any member of the infant's family has made a claim for damages and why that's not been settled. And then an affidavit of the attorney, an affidavit shall see reasons for recommending settlement that, uh, that he's not been concerned by the settlement indirectly or directly, that he will not receive compensation from any such party opposing, whether he's represented or now represents any other person asserting a claim from the same occurrence, and three, the services rendered by him. Okay, then it says medical or hospital report. If the action is for damages for personal injuries to the infant or incompetent, one or more medical or hospital reports, which need not be verified, shall be included in the supporting papers. On the hearing, the petitioner, the infant or incompetent, and his attorney shall attend unless attendance is excused for a good cause. A controversy shall not be submitted to arbitration except pursuant to court order made upon application of the representative of the infant or incompetent. Petition for appointment of a guardian. The petition shall seat, one, the age and residence of the infant, two, name and residence of every, any living parent, <coughs> three, name and residence of the person proposed as guardian, the relationship he bears to the infant, the nature, status, and value of infant's state. Undertaking. 
The court shall make an order requiring a dispensing wholly or partly with an undertaking in an amount according to conditions set forth in 708 of the Surrogate's Court Procedure Act. That's what I didn't know. The court may direct the principal of the estate or any part be invested in bonds in New York State or of the U.S. or invested in obligations of any county, city, town, village, or school district of the state of New York or deposit with any bank, trust company, insurance savings. Okay, upon the filing of the guardian shall file a certified copy of the order with the surrogate's court in the county where he's been appointed. We know that. Prop petition to Supreme is to... Okay, if you want to commence a special proceeding for um, a, ju um, a settlement for an infant and there's no motion term going on, there's nothing going on, so you can commence a special proceed. well, the, the infant's, you know, conservator or whatever, or guardian, could commence the action in the county court, and the county court will be able to award um, unlimited damages. If an action is timely commenced and is terminated in any other manner, then by a voluntary discontinuance, a failure to obtain personal jurisdiction over the defendant, a dismissal of the complaint for neglect to prosecute, or a final judgment upon the merits, or if the plaintiff dies and the cause of action survives, his or her executor or administrator may commence a new action upon the same transaction within six months after the termination, provided that the new action would have been timely commenced at the time of comm commencement and that service upon defendant is affected within such six-month period. Where the defendant has served an answer and the action is terminated in any manner, and a new action upon the same transaction is commenced by the plaintiff or his successor in interest, the assertion of any cause of action or defense by the defendant in the new action shall be timely commenced if it was timely asserted in the prior action. This section also applies to a proceeding brought under the workers' comp law. A party may amend or supplement his pleading upon leave of court or upon stipulation of all parties at any time. If an action is timely commenced and is terminated in any other manner, then by a voluntary discontinuance, a failure to obtain personal jurisdiction over the defendant, a dismissal of the complaint for neglect to prosecute, or a final judgment upon the merits, Or, if the plaintiff dies and the cause of action survives, his or her executor or administrator may commence a new action upon the same transaction within six months after the termination, provided that the new action would have been timely commenced at the time of comm commencement, and that service upon defendant is affected within such six-month period. Where the defendant has served an answer and the action is terminated in any manner, and a new action upon the same transaction is commenced by the plaintiff or his successor in interest, the assertion of any cause of action or defense by the defendant in the new action shall be timely commenced if it was timely asserted in the prior action. This section also applies to a proceeding brought under the workers' comp law. If the complaint is not served with the summons, the defendant may, within the time to answer, serve a demand for the complaint. Service of the complaint shall be made within 20 days of the demand. 3011. There shall be a complaint and an answer. 
An answer may include a counterclaim and a cross-claim. A defendant's pleading against another claimant is an interpleader complaint, or against any other person not already a party is a third-party complaint. There shall be a reply to a counterclaim denominated as such, an answer to an interpleader complaint, or a third-party complaint, or his successor and interest, the assertion of any cause of action or defense by the defendant in the new action shall be timely commenced if it was timely asserted in the prior action.